Hey guys, Sunday Butchers here. Today I come to you with a video that is a, a different format than what you're used to. Um, I'm not going to draw anything, I'm not going to be illustrating or coloring or explaining anything. Um, instead, I asked you to ask me a lot of questions. Um, anything that was on your mind, anything you were curious about, um, even you know towards the upcoming year. Um, so today I will just be answering your questions. The first question is, if you dream large, what would it be? And this question comes from Jan van het End. Um, he asked this question on Facebook, uh, which is absolutely cool. Thank you very much for the question, Jan. Um, and if I dream large, if I dream big, what would it be? The thing is that I dream a lot. <laughs> and um, uh, my dreams always have this sort of surreal sort of taste, you know, with them. Um, and my, I guess my ultimate dream is to have my books published, or at least one of them. Okay, <laughs> dream small, but also very big. Um, have at least one book published um, with a uh, traditional publisher and to have that picked up with uh, movie rights or game rights or whatever. Like to see, I, I guess the ideal picture is to have that story out there, um, to have it become so huge uh, and then to see it from there turned either into you know a, a video format or a game format to, to actually then really see it become real that that would be my ultimate ultimate dream yes <laughs> kind of crazy but oh well it's a dream right all right next question Ooh. <laughs> where does your obsession with mice come from uh, this question is from sophia drent I should, I should just say Dutch names in Dutch, shouldn't I? Sophia at the end. <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. Um, my obsession with mice is actually kind of a story of its own. Uh, a couple of years ago, and by a couple of years, I mean more than a decade ago by now, <laughs> which really hurts. Um, I used to work, or part-time work, uh, as a falconer. Uh, I, I teamed up with a friend. Um, and um, he was like a professional falconer, so he had a lot of birds of prey, lots of owls, lots of anything really. Um, and I kind of, you know, went with him, uh, uh, learned the craft, learned, you know, how to take care of these animals, and it was great. At a certain point, um, there was a, a small nest of barn owls, uh, of which I got, you know, got to take one home. Um, so at some point, my freezer <laughs> was filled with dead mice because, you know, I used to feed them uh, to the owl. Um, and after, after a while, I had this weird obsession, or not, not even an obsession, I had this weird interest in taxidermy. So I started to taxidermize these mice. Uh, they were easy to practice on, they were cheap, you know, if it didn't work, I could still feed the, the insides to the owl. It was, you know, it was good for everybody. <laughs> um, so... I already had like this interest in how how this, these little clocks ticked, um, you know, how were these animals put together, What, how did they work, <laughs> it kind of sounds sort of morbid, but it was really just uh, almost like your, your vivisection class, you know, during biology. Um, so it, it, I, was, I was curious, um, taxidermized a few pieces, and then from there, uh, for a very long time, I really didn't do anything with any of that. Um, and at a certain point, I picked up drawing again. Um, and I realized that, you know, why not start with mice? So I did a lot of sketches in the beginning. Um, and then up until next, or, or this year actually, like earlier this year, um, I was invited as an artist uh, to Eurocon in Rotterdam, which was in August, and it was, a, it was absolutely great. It was fantastic. Um, but that was the first time I actually brought a series of art with me, and that series was based on mice. The series was called The Age of Mice. Um, and so, <laughs> I don't know, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it an obsession. It is more of, a, of an interest. You know, they're, they're easy to examine, they're easy to draw, they're easy to put into human scenarios, really. You, you can, it, it's, it's really one of these animals that really work well as an anthropomorphic character. Um, so, but again, I would call it an interest more than an obsession. <laughs> All right, um, let's see what we have here. Oh, nice. Where do you get your ideas and inspiration from and how do you blend that 
uh, with your own style. And this comes from Rico Odrasir. You guys come up with these amazing questions. I really enjoy this. Um, where do I find my inspiration? Well, this is um, another one of these answers that's going to sound maybe a little bit cheesy, but I get inspired by pretty much anything and everything. Um, I can walk down the street, see a leaf fall from the tree and, you know, I, I don't know, <laughs> have this weird uh, inspiration to start drawing motion. Um, or I can... Um, uh, oh, I had it the other day where um, I watched a video clip on uh, a restoration of some old paintings for museums. Um, and all of a sudden my mind went to uh, oil painting um, and, and, and oil painting is, is, is something that I've always wanted to try out but for whatever reason I've never really gotten into it um, but it's also been a style that I've chased digitally for a very very long time um, and so we're going back again to this Eurocon in, back in August where um, uh, Bem Hage was also one of the artists uh, for the art show now, I'm a huge fan of her. her. Her work is absolutely phenomenal and I love her style because guess what? She has this painterly oil painting sort of style to her work and I adore that. Um, she was even kind enough to share uh, <laughs> which brushes she used for that. Uh, and so things come together, you know, I had this interest in oil painting, I suddenly had the right brush set, uh, and now two months later, a lot of my work is actually in this style. So it's it's like two months of practicing, two months of just experimenting, uh, and you know what, it's going to be experimenting for, for a, a, you know, a lot longer than that, because I surely have not mastered that particular style yet. But inspiration can come from something very small, and sometimes just something random has this huge, huge impact. So it's it's everywhere and anywhere, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go to the next question. Which, <laughs> which is a funny one, because I'm not even sure if I can stream that in this video. Um, the question is, <laughs> what is your favorite word to say? Um, and what is your favorite word to use? Now, people who know me personally, <laughs> this is going to become very awkward very quickly. Um, but people who know me personally know that I swear quite a lot. <clears throat> so if there's one word that I would use a lot, it would be f f this, f that. <clears throat> oh, my voice really doesn't work anymore. Um, so it's uh, it's the F word, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, maybe it's not pretty, but it's uh, it works. You know, if you if you're a frustrated artist, it, uh, there's a lot of power to that. Um, other than that, let's see what is a. I love the word cacophony, but it's also one of these, like, <laughs> everybody and their mom has that as a favorite word, so, eh, I will stay with the F word. <laughs> also, by the way, this question was from uh, Andra Alanovic, um, who is a brilliant person because um, I work together with her uh, on the Imminent Peril card game, of which I will be telling you a lot more um, in the next couple of months. Um, so keep an eye out on that and be sure to follow uh, Crit Harder. Go to Facebook or YouTube, whatever. You can pretty much find them everywhere. Um, look for Crit Harder because uh, these folks are amazing. So have a look at them. Uh, let's see the next question. It's a bit of a long one. Let me read that for you. Sometimes when I sit down to write, I get this fear, but it's not really fear. Uh, maybe it's a weird anxiety that I don't understand. Whatever it is, it makes it difficult to start to get those first few uh, sentences down. Uh, once I'm going and I feel the characters, uh, it is my favorite thing to do in the world. But oh boy, what the hell is it about getting started? Have you ever experienced anything like that? And this question comes from Brian Falla. Thank you very much for your question. It is an excellent question, by the way. Um, and this is really something that I will... Um, I will spend some time on because I do think this fear, and I think I do think it is fear or, or a form of anxiety, is quite common actually. There is a lot of people I know that have this fear of an empty canvas or of an empty word page. You know, if you're a writer, um, it's interesting because I and I have it too. By the way, <laughs> let's let's start with that. I have that fear uh, every every damn time I start with a new illustration. The funny thing is, the line art always kind of flows. I, I have no problem with 
setting up lines, you know, sketching and making mistakes, erasing stuff, doing it again and doing it over again and again, um, you know, un until I, I feel like my line art is fine. But then there's the line art with this white canvas behind it and I need to start coloring it. And there are times where I just sit and stare at my screen for more than half an hour before I actually pick up uh, that pen and start, you know, coloring. I, it is weird, it is a very weird experience because at a certain point, you know, you, you know that you can do this. You've done this a million times. You've written hundreds of stories. You've, uh, you know, colored or, or you've illustrated hundreds of things. So why, why do we keep feeling this? I don't know. I, I really don't know where this comes from, but it's pretty common and I have the same thing. Um, it's this first five minutes for me. It's not necessarily like as soon as there is a, a blot of ink on the, uh, on the page that I'm done. It's like the first five or ten minutes where I have to get into the flow, where I... It's, it's pretty much like you say. Um, you know, once you're going and you feel what's happening, it's fine. But it's the first step in there. I honestly don't know what it is or what causes it. I, I guess it's, in a way, this fear of commitment, maybe. It's like when you get started, you have to finish it. Or there's like this, this promise you make to yourself, like, you know, there's no room for failure, there's no room for giving up. You know, once you start, you are committed and you gotta finish this. It doesn't matter if it takes a day or a week or a year, but you will be working on this until it is done. And, and perhaps that is a sort of pressure that we put upon ourselves um, and why we are afraid to get started, because we know that, you know, if we make that promise to ourselves, we are committed. So maybe in a way it's like a sphere of commitment. I honestly don't know. Um, <clears throat> but I do think this is the most, um, this is the closest to, I think, what I feel when I, when I stare at this blank screen and, you know, have to get started. But it was a great question. It's an excellent question. Um, and I'm actually kind of curious. I want to, I want to Google this and, and investigate where this comes from and why we feel this. Next question. Do you have plans to ever design your own tarot deck? This is a great question. Again, like you guys only ask me the right questions. Um, this question is from Jan Vrolix. Thank you very much. And um, um, what is interesting is that tarot decks have been in, on my mind for a bit. Um, until a couple of months ago, I was I, I actually created my Excel sheet, you know, with all the different cards to go into a deck. It's 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 been on my to do list, um, and then suddenly all kinds of projects came between, um, namely the Imminent Peril project, <laughs> of which again I will tell you a lot more about that when the time comes. So stay tuned for that, please. Um, um, but I, I I had ideas. And then suddenly I had these huge projects coming at me. So it kind of fell off my radar. Um, but if I ever have like six months of nothing, which in one way I hope that's never going to happen. Um, but let's say, you know, just in case, <laughs> um, a tarot deck is definitely, it's definitely something that I would, I would work on um, in the future. Yes. Um, another friend question, what can we expect from you in 2025? And this question comes from Ms. The Wolf, um, who actually has the release of her own book, I think, uh, sometime pretty soon, or it just recently has been. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, um, but it is definitely worth it to go check out her work. Um, and also, thank you very much for your question, of course. Um, what can we expect in 2025? Whew, a lot. Um, it, again, it, like people who know me or people have, who have been around my pages for a bit longer um, know that I am always up to something. Um, and this something um, uh, tends to become bigger and bigger, um, you know, the longer time passes. Um, so for 2025, I, <laughs> the problem is I can't really give you any specific names or titles of these projects yet. Um, but, but that time will come. <laughs> Um, again, I, I don't want to spoil any surprises and I don't want to say anything um, or, or give away anything, you know, that's not meant to be given away yet. Um, but there are a couple of stories <laughs> on the radar. Um, 
and uh, illustrations. You can, I mean, okay, so at the very least, you can expect a lot of ins uh, illustrations from me. Um, this year, I, um, I set the goal to do one illustration per week, which um, meant that I, I've, I've really been pushing hard this year. I have produced a lot of art. Um, it's really blood, sweat and tears at this point. Um, on the other hand, it's, it's worth it because if I look at the previous set of cons that I did, like the conventions that I went to, all that art is really starting to pay off and it's it's wonderful to see so many people you know enjoy your work enjoy your art um, potentially even buy your art which is even better <laughs> um, but wh what you can expect in any case is illustrations a lot a lot of illustrations hopefully I will be able to announce a book or a book deal um, and very very hopefully Nope, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> um, you can also expect the Imminent Peril card game in 2025. I think I am allowed to say that at this point. If not, I will go back into this video and edit that out with a little bleep or anything. Um, I will just cut that out. Um, but you can expect a lot of art and stories again in 2025. Um, which leads us to the final question, which is from Melinda uh, Schuitema. I'm going to pronounce this in a Dutch way, but I know you... I, I, I think you Americans say Schuitema. Um, or something like I don't I don't know man I'm butchering your name either way I'm sorry <laughs> um, then again your question is also a bit of a butcher <laughs> um, you start she started off with um, should I ask about your AI art please don't block me <laughs> um, I'm gonna address that bit first before I go into the final bit of that question because this is kind of a, a two-part question um, should I ask about your AI art? I mean, you can, but the answer would be very short because you know, everybody who knows me and also everybody who doesn't know me, I do not work with AI. I condemn it. I, I do not agree with it. I am very outspoken about the use of it and the, the, the ethic part of it. And it's not cool, bro. It's really not. It, please don't use that. I don't. Um, real artists don't. And I know... <laughs> Haters gonna hate, I don't care. Um, but AI is not on any of my agendas, really, it is not. Um, please don't block me. Too late, Melinda, I've already blocked you. No, that's not true. Um, you know, I adore you, you are one of my biggest fans, so keep keep, keep going and it, I'll accept your joke. <laughs> um, the final bit of her question is interesting. Here we go. When are you going to start another book collaboration with MK Gibson? Chop, chop. Um, <laughs> yes, the answer to that is yes. Um, I actually think it is, uh, it is time to um, <laughs> avoid the question and um, say goodbye with this video. Let's, let's wrap this up, end this. Um, but as, I <laughs> as I'm ending this, please stick to the very, very end of this video um, because I will show you something. And I guess that little something um, is in a way an answer to this question. So, all right, <laughs> thank you all for your amazing questions. Thank you all for watching, I hope you stick around. Um, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do. Um, you will have a lot of art videos coming right up. Um, I post a short and a long video every week, so there is plenty of food to, to devour. Um, but let me answer the question for you first. <laughs> Thank you.